What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Russ Mitchell, Homesick Buckeye. We're here with another installment of Keto Conversations, where we bring you people from all walks of life who have embraced ketogenic living and seen tremendous changes. We want to share their stories with you in an effort to inspire you, motivate you, uplift you, and get you on that keto road with us or keep you on that keto road with us. And today's guest, he needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. And he's got he's got a smoker the size of an 18-wheeler. It's my man, Carnivore Kip. What's going on, Kip? Nothing much, man. I'm excited to get on here with you tonight and chat with you. Uh, I love watching y'all's live stream that y'all do. You're hilarious. You're oh. definitely the life of that party. Oh, so it's good on. to chat with you on here tonight. Listen, you know, it's not the hard, it's not hard to be the life of the party when you're on with Adam. I mean, come on, man. That's not, you know, it's like, I don't even know. It's just, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but no, I'm just kidding. That's my man. That's my buddy. I appreciate that, man. That means a lot coming from you because you were one of the first per people that I watched, you know, when I, when I got into the whole YouTube thing, it was probably around maybe March or April of this year. Um, you know, you were one of the people and I remember seeing you, man, and, and you were just cool, man. You're cool as the other side of the pillow, man. You got it just like a an easygoing nature about you, man, and you're a family guy, and you're just kind of down to earth and real. And uh, you're a big dude too, man. So, you know, you're one of my buffet brothers. And uh, you know, it's like if I'd met you back in the day. Yeah, if I'd have met you back in the day, man, we could have just wrecked shop, man. We'd have hit golden corrals from sea to shot and sea, man. We'd have tore them up, brother. We tore them up. <laughs> But you were just a good dude. I just felt a good energy coming from you, man. And I was listening to you and listening to you talk about, you know, your thing. And I'm just like, man, that's a good, good dude. And um, so I sent you an email and you ghosted me, but that's okay. It's no problem. I understand now how busy you are, man, and, and I love it. But today, timing is everything, man. It wasn't the right time. Now is the right time. And we're on here kicking it, man. So, yeah, it's it's a pleasure and an honor just to, to have you here. You have a great story and you're a great dude. And I can't wait for people uh you know to get to know you so we're going to start where we start with everybody on keto conversations tell us where you were born and what your childhood was like i was actually born in mobile alabama and i've lived in a small town like 45 minutes north of there it's called atmore alabama i've lived there my whole life it's in the deep deep south alabama like we're close to mobile bay and uh so I mean, I grew up, I had a country living, like we didn't have Wi-Fi. We never had, we didn't have cable TV. We didn't have, we didn't have a house phone until I was like 16. We didn't have <laughs> Wi-Fi until I was like 16. Uh, <laughs> what, you smoke signals, man? Would you have Pony Express? I mean, what was going on out I, there in Atmore? No, if you wanted to talk to somebody, like if you wanted to talk to somebody, you drove to their house. <laughs> <laughs> now you drove to their house. I mean, you didn't hitch up a horse in a wagon or nothing. Like you, you <laughs> no. Nah, but I did. Ha I did have a huffy bicycle, and I used to ride out on that huffy bicycle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, I grew up small town living. We mm. we all we didn't have much, but we had each other, and we yeah. uh, we ate some good food though. We ate a lot of country food, and uh. I tell everybody now on the carnivore that are that do carnivore like me that you know you shouldn't be having that stuff, but I mean that it does taste good. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, man, I'm you know we don't we're not that far apart, man. I had a Huffy bicycle too. Now you know I'm a, I think I'm a little older than you. I was born in '69. What year were you born in? '93. Okay, yeah, yeah, I I graduated from high school in '87. Yeah, so. <laughs> But, but, but <laughs> I know I'm old. I know I look good. I know I look good to be 70. Uh, yeah. but, <laughs> but I had a healthy bicycle and our, our, listen, I grew up in a little town called Ashley, Ohio. I don't know how many people live there. It's probably less than 5,000. Uh, our neighbors were cornfields and, mm -hmm. uh, and literally this is uh 19, probably 75 or so our neighbor across the street didn't have running water. They had a big well in the middle of their living room. Okay, seriously, and an outhouse. There were two old, older, uh, they had to be 70 if they were a day. But sisters lived there, the Dennis sisters. And I never forget, you know, going over there to help them or something. And I walked into their living room and they literally had a big well, like an old school, you know, 
in the middle of their living room. And I'm like, what? Because we, you know, we lived across the street. Now, we didn't have, we had a cistern. I don't know if you grew up, I don't know if you had a cistern. All right. Uh, yeah. you got, there you go. So you know what that is, though. For people who don't know, it's a big, gigantic water tank, underground water tank, um, where, and the city would come out and truck water out to us and put it in there. And that's how we got our, our water. We had a filtration system and all that kind of stuff. So we had a sister. So we had running water and stuff in there, but they didn't have that. And they, they just had that old well and that outhouse out there. And we were like, boy, that's, yeah, that's like one step above caveman living there. But it was a nice, nice little house though. So yeah, I, I grew up that by the time By the time that I was born, we had we had already had like running water and we had already had lights and all that stuff but when my daddy was growing up they didn't have a lot of that stuff and they had holes in the floor i think and then they had like they used to uh they would they had an outhouse and they would wipe with corn cobs oh so they they that's yeah. how it was like even though he's only like 60 years old yeah he grew up dirt dirt poor yeah yeah and that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So what was your like, um, like grade school and middle school wise, you know, what was your life like in terms of, I mean, you, you grew up just eating the same kind of stuff, like, you know, that, that we grew up eating a lot of biscuits and, you know, you know, my mom used to make cream of wheat and biscuits and pancakes and all that kind of stuff. Is that kind of what you guys ate as a, a diet growing up? Yeah, well, a lot of Southern food. Yeah. So my my mama, she always cooked with cast iron. And when yeah. she wasn't cooking with cast iron, she had like big pots that she would make like uh different peas and, and corn and different things like that in. But it was always loaded with butter and bacon and, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, homemade cornbread and fried yeah. chicken. Like literally I tell people like, cause since I've been married, even before I started carnivore, my wife and I, we don't like fry food really hardly ever because mm -hmm. you know, I know what it done to me growing up yeah. and I love the way it tastes, but like, I just told her like, Hey, we just need to like grill stuff and yeah. stuff like that. But whenever I was growing up, like one night would be fried chicken. The next night would be fried pork chops. And yeah. then the next night would be like some type of fried cube steak. Yeah. And then the next night we might have had some fried deer meat with some rice and gravy or something. Yeah. So it was yeah. always fried. Yeah. And if it's not the frying that's so bad, because I fry a lot of stuff too, but I just fry it in butter or just fry, and I don't bread it. You know, what I yeah. Mean? When I say fried, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm talking about yeah. with bread. Like, yeah, yeah. Bread it up. Yes. Yes. Deep fried, bread it up, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No. Listen, I'm with you on that, man. My, my, I had Southern influence, even though we didn't live in the South. My my grandmother was my dad's mother was born in Berea, Kentucky, and my mother's mother was born in Macon, Georgia, and mm -hmm. you know in 1909. But um, but yeah, so so we had that Southern influence. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. My grandmother had a cast iron skillet, and she fried everything in that thing. And and uh, we were Seventh Day Adventists, so we didn't eat a lot of pork. Um, we didn't eat any pork really, or use lard. Um, but everything, oh yeah, butter and you know she had and lard makes the best fried chicken. You better believe it does. But a lot of beef, you know, tallow is whatever. But yeah, she had it. She used to make all everything in that skillet, man. She would make cornbread. She fried chicken. It was something else, man. That 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 southern life. So got it. So and there was nobody in your in your family that was health conscious. Was everybody overweight in your family growing you up when you were a little kid or? How did, how was that dynamic? Yeah, there was, well, in my immediate family, like my mo my mama, my daddy, and my brothers and sisters, or my brothers and my sister, none, they were all overweight, but I was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Like I was more overweight than everybody else. The rest of them were still, you know, they were still hefty, mm -hmm. but, um, but I, I mean, I've got multiple cousins that are my size and I've got a cousin that was a lot bigger than I was. Yeah. And so it runs throughout our whole family. You should see our family reunions <laughs> and like what we, what we eat, man. And the, the, the picnic tables have to be really sturdy yeah. and, <laughs> and we bring heavy duty lawn chairs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's been times when we sit around campfires on stumps because we don't want to break yeah. on chairs. Man, listen, and when I was so. doing stand up comedy, I, I did a, a Veterans Day show and I was I made a joke about that. I'm like, 
hey, you know, I said they wouldn't let me in the military because I told them the only thing I could kill was a bucket of chicken and plastic lawn chairs. You know, <laughs> that's all I could kill. I was like, and they told me to go home. <laughs> you know? yeah, I broke two pla- two of those uh, lawn chairs at the creek one weekend, and after that, we fixed up a stump on the side, and I sat on that the rest of the time. Yeah, a stump and a cinder block. That's it. <laughs> I love that, man. I, yeah, I've I've broken some chairs, some beds. Yeah. I've broken anything that you, that you can sit on or stand on. I've pretty much broken it in my life. So that that's definitely true. All right. So, <laughs> so moving into like high school age where you, did you play sport? You've been in that. I mean, you been, look, I know somebody wanted to put some pads on you and put you on somebody's line somewhere. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, the, the coach, whenever I was in middle school, he looked at me and he's like, you are playing football. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I play, so I played, I was on the offensive line cause I definitely wasn't going to be no quarterback. <laughs> so, so I was on the offense, I was on the offensive line. And, uh, at, at one point I played, uh, guard, I played tackle and then at one year our uh, center broke his arm so I had to uh play center I wasn't very good at center though yeah yeah but yeah I played football but now when you get to high school I actually dropped out of middle school after like around Christmas time my eighth grade year so I've actually never been to high school in my life so yeah I've never been to high school ever i I dropped out and, and, and growing up in the south i mean everybody all the everybody's parents don't always obey the law yeah so, so like they were just like eh, we just ain't gonna say nothing because I was actually not quite old enough to quit school right and so we just kept it hush hush for like yeah. another year until I was old enough to it didn't matter anymore. Yeah, you're big and enough so, you look like somebody's dad anyway, so probably so you you know you, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if I went to town, I mean I, nobody nobody cared, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny, man. I've talked to several people, you know, Todd Botnis, I did a, a conversation with him and he never went to high school and uh, and even Ollie, we talked about it on her. She didn't go to high school. It's like I've got like a you know, a, a, a kind of a pattern, a trend here. I feel like I got a lot of folks like that. It's interesting. Um, I did eventually, I did eventually get my GED and go to college, but I mean, that was way after the fact and everything that I decided to get my GED and go to college. Yeah. 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 So, so, okay. So during those high school years, um, were you still eating the standard American diet? You know, where were you at in your like on your path, how much did you weigh and what was kind of going on in your life? Of course, you had youth on your side during, I certainly did during those days. So, you know, talk a little bit about just those years and what your diet was like and were you continually gaining weight or, or what that was going was like? Well, during those years, I can remember, I, I normally weighed between 350 and 400 pounds yeah. during the high school years. Cause I remember whenever I turned around 18, I was right. I was right at 400 pounds around the time that I turned 18. So, and honestly, I stayed above that all the way until now. Now, like, in fairness, just in fairness, just for people who don't know or may not know you, you're you're not a short guy by any stretch. How tell everybody how tall you are? Yeah, I'm right around six foot four. Yeah. So I mean, it's not terrible, terrible, yeah. but it's still, still. I mean, I wore up. a size sixty. I wore a size sixty two suit. I wore yeah. a five X, sometimes a six X shirt. Yeah. And so I mean, it, I'm it's still pretty big. No, but, no, no um, doubt about it. But a four hundred pound guy that's five foot nine is a little different setup. I mean, that guy's a bowling ball with legs, you know. But a guy that's six four, six five, whatever. I mean, you can kind of carry. It a little differently, um, you know, but yeah. still it's important for people to kind of get a context. Um, now, I don't know about you, but in my high school years, as I was, because I had my weight problem when I was eight years old. And so coming up through middle school, high school and stuff, and I was athletic and played sports and stuff, but I was still a big kid and you get teased and stuff like that. Um, but I was a silly guy. I give it right back to them. You know, they weren't going to, yeah. They, you know, you weren't gonna mess with me too too much, but it changed when I got to be an adult. Did you notice any change in terms of like how people treated you when you went 
from being a big kid to being a big adult? Well, whenever I was a, a, a kid, I mean, like I had people, there were people that would try to like, uh, like pick at you or whatever, yeah. but my defense mechanism was like stand up for myself. So like right. I got in multiple fights. Right, right. And, you had different uh, hands. You had and, different hands. Yeah. <laughs> And when when a big dude hits you, you stop talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so yeah. that kind of, yeah. yeah. I wasn't that, that guy. I had I had jokes. I had when, yeah. when I if you if you came for me, I was gonna but see I wouldn't talk about I wouldn't talk about you. I'd talk about whoever I thought was most important. So I'd talk about mm -hmm. your mom, your grandma. If you know, it's just you know whatever. I mean, your sister, you know, anything I could do to to get you because it's like you know a lot of times people mess with you. You pick on them; they don't care. But I'm like, yeah, tell your grandma to trim her mustache before she comes up to school next week, and everybody's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Then they, you yeah. know, they know. No, no, listen, this guy's doing he's picking on my grandma. I gotta leave him alone, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so that was kind of my thing: silly, funny. Um, you know, I didn't get into too many fights and stuff in high school, but you were like, yeah, you talk about me, you're going to get that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I put a couple knots on a couple hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now that's interesting. Well, for me, when I, when I transitioned from high school to adulthood, and I don't know if you have any experience with this, it was very different because as a, you know, in high school and say, I would, you know, kids needle you, you know, fat, so this or that or whatever. But when I got out into the world and I was adult, I was now big guy, the big man. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, big dog? You know, I mean, and I actually embraced it. I loved it, man. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, a, you know, everybody's favorite big guy, man. They, you know, I was social, you know, I never had any problems that way. And when I was on the company softball team. I had big dog on the back of my shirt, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was a happy fat dude. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, now, did you have anything like that? Did you experience anything like that? Or what was your like transitioning as an adult? I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way. And I think a lot of it is like kids are, um, kids have no filter and they'll just say anything and, uh, they'll tell you what they're thinking and they'll just, they'll be hateful. Whereas whenever people are more adults, you know, like they're not, whenever you're 25 years old, you're not going to look cool if you're sitting there picking on somebody right. that's overweight. <laughs> right. Like, like if you're 14, it's different, but if yeah. you're 25 and you're picking on somebody, yeah. like you're going to look like a jerk. Yeah. So, yes. So yes. That's so I think right. that people have mature hit a different level of maturity, but it does make it seem like it's more okay for you to stay gaining weight and be that big because like people love you. Like people called me big daddy and or yeah. not big daddy. It was a few people would and yeah. different things. And you know, it makes it seem like, Oh, it's okay. Yeah. No, listen, I mean, again, it's, I was, you know, I was silly and funny and I had a good job. I had a lot going for me. So I never had any social, you know, problems like that. I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't feel handicapped. And then, like you said, you got youth on your side too. So, you know, you got that going for you. Um, but I was a happy big guy well into my forties, you know, I mean, I was, I was that dude, you know, I was, I was cool with it. I never really thought that much about it, but I was, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not as tall as you. I'm only six feet tall, but I was about, I was probably 260, 270 coming out of high school, but by 1993, which was six years out of high school, I was 319 pounds. And mm. that's the, the last time I weighed myself before this year was in 1993. You know, I didn't weigh myself for 30 years. Um, no. I just didn't, I just didn't care. I was, I, you know, I mean, I knew I was big and knew I was heavy, but I didn't really care you know, how much I weighed. And it's funny because I talk about that now and people ask, well, what's your goal weight or whatever? I'm like, I don't know. I don't care. I only weigh myself once a month. I didn't care how much I weighed for 30 years. So it's like, why do I care now? You know, but the thing that prompted me to begin trying to find ways to lose weight, it wasn't a scale. It was my life. And that's the way I kind of measure myself now. I don't care what the scale says. I don't care what that number says. I care about my life and the things that I can do now and the places I can go now and the quality of my life improving 
because of the weight I'm losing. That's more important. You don't live your life on a scale. You live your life off the scale, you know? So Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about um, when um, maybe the transition from being a big guy and being kind of cool with it to where you first thought, yeah, I got a problem. Yeah. uh, For me, it was probably... Because like you said, when I was about 380 to 400 pounds, I mean, yeah, it, it, it sucked being that heavy, but it wasn't the end of the world. Once I started getting up to like 420, 440 pounds, I remember that was around the time I was in college. And um, and I it actually went to college and I had to do a lot of walking around and I couldn't keep up with people. Yeah, and I couldn't. Uh, I mean, I mean, I felt crazy people seeing me walk and struggle like I was walking and um and you know even whenever I'm you know she's my wife now when we got together there were things that I would have liked to have been able to go do and events that I'd like to go to and things like that or go take her to six flags and ride rides and like I wasn't able to do it because I weighed way too much and I was too unhealthy to do it all I was like hey baby you want to you want to uh get some donuts and watch a movie, yeah. you know, and uh, because that's a lot easier and we can sit on the couch and relax. Yeah. And so, you know, whenever I was around 420 pounds, that's whenever I started realizing like, Hey, like this is bad. But then I let it go on for a long time, like another decade, mm-hmm. uh, pretty much almost another decade, another eight or ten, eight or nine years. I just let that go on. And then that 420 pounds, eventually turned into 498 pounds which was like two pounds away from 500 pounds and it it was just it was getting bad like my daughter was born and i was struggling with taking care of her like picking her up out of her crib just doing tons of different things like i felt like here's this awesome little girl that i love more than anything in the world and like like if she needs me to get underneath a uh truck to fix a tire one day i'm not going to be able to because i can't i can't even get down and get back up harley yeah. or i'm not going to be able to go outside and cut the grass and things like that because i'm so out of shape uh, and it just felt it's like it, it's depressing yeah. and so and, and you know every time i went to the doctor i got chewed out mm-hmm. and they kept telling me do some low calorie stuff and all that yeah. you know how the, you know how that goes yeah and no you know, not really i never went to the doctor but but well, I would go only because my wife kept pushing me to go. And there were times, like you said, where you, you wouldn't get on the scale because you were fine with the weight. I wouldn't get on the scale, not because of that. It was because I was I was scared to see what the number was. I knew like I was scared. I was like, man, if I get on the scale, it might be over 500 or it might be yeah. this. And I, I don't even want to see the number. Yeah. And so I, I would push it off and push it off and push it off. But whenever I would go to the doctor, I would have to get on the scale. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting you should mention that. I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't okay with it per se. I mean, I guess in a way you could say I was okay with it because I wasn't doing anything about it, but I just didn't think about it. it. It wasn't, I wasn't for it or against it. I just didn't really think about it at all. And, um, I, I, I judged my life by how I was living It's where, I, you know, I was doing the things I wanted to do. I was going where I wanted to go. I, I had what I thought was a good life and I didn't have any aches or pains. I wasn't sickly. I've never, I say all the time, I've never spent a night in a hospital. I've never taken a medication outside of antibiotic in my life. Um, I just was just heavy. I was just, you know, to where I couldn't support my weight. Um, you know, that was my only problem. I didn't have problems sleeping. I wasn't diabetic. I was, I mean, my A1C at 500 pounds, my A1C was five. I mean, it's just, it, yeah, that, it, that's, it, that's incredible. Like yeah. you just have a good, some good blood or yeah, I, uh, I, you, I got, just, you got something going in your favor, man. I just was heavy. And you know, when it came to, I first heard of the Atkins diet in 2000, early 2000s which was, you know, Dr. Atkins is the godfather of all the, the low carb stuff. And, you know, they thought he was a quack and all this kind of stuff. And I did, I thought he was a quack too. I mean, I thought it was the craziest thing I'd ever heard. I thought you were going to just, you know, you were trading short-term weight loss 
for long-term health risk is basically what I thought. It's like, great, you lose this weight, but you die of a stroke. I mean, oh, I don't have any health problems. I don't want to have, you know, health problems on top of being 500 pounds. Like, you know, so that's why I didn't do it. And it's crazy when I look back because I'm like, I had the answer 20 years ago and just, you know, um, just didn't know about it. But funny thing, you know, I never went to the doctor except when I was sick because I never felt bad, you know. But a funny story, probably about 15 years ago, close to 15 years ago, I had strep throat and I went to the doctor and they asked me to get on the scale. And I looked at the scale and I just shook my head. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. But I got on the scale and it was one of those scales with the little knob that goes up and down and it went, you know, straight up to the top. And she's over there fiddling with it, trying to, and I'm just like, yeah. So she looks at me and she says, well, this scale only goes up to 350 pounds, which I weighed 319, you know, 20 years before that. So it was like, you know, like, she's like, um, how much do you think you weigh? I said, uh, 351. <laughs> <laughs> she, she looked at me. She said, we'll just go with that. <laughs> she put 51 on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, it's like, like I said, I, 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 again, I knew I was getting heavier because I was wearing bigger clothes and things like that. But again, I, I never knew how much I weighed until I bought the, I bought a scale, a 500 pound scale in uh, February or March of this year and got on it and it said error. And um. yeah, and then I got, I got off of it. I got back on and it said, I told you error, dummy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> it said one at a time, please. <laughs> no, I was, I was like, error. I'm like, oh, no. So I uh, I sent it back and I got a 700-pound scale uh, probably around the 1st of April or so, but I didn't open it. I didn't weigh myself. I just left it in the box until I got into ketosis about a month and a half later. And I decided to weigh myself and I was 548 pounds when I weighed myself then. And I was in ketosis at the time for how so long I, knew I weighed more than 548, you know, at some point, For how long had you started before you weighed? How long I started to what? How long were you in ketosis before you weighed on the scale that well, day? the first day I had a, I had a little meter that I blew into and that's a story in and of itself. If people that follow me know it took me a year to get to ketosis. Uh, I won't talk about that here, but, um, it was a process. It was a process, but <laughs> I had this little meter that I blew into every day. I knew I was getting close. And so I bought that scale like in April and I was still eating some things I shouldn't and still having some, but I was way, way ahead of where I was, you know, over there. And I knew I was getting close and I blow in that meter. And the first day I ever blew in there, I blew like a six, you know, it went up to like 40 or something. I blew like a six and I was like, Oh, and if you blew, you know, higher than a certain number, you, you know, you're in beginning ketosis. And when I did that, I was so happy and so excited because that was my goal to get to ketosis. I knew if I could get to ketosis, I'd be, I'd be free. I'm like, that's the key for me. And when I blew into that thing, I saw the ketosis. I was excited. I was happy. And I'm thought today's the day. And I opened the scale and weighed myself. Um, when you were on the keto cookout, it was, um, an interesting conversation about, you know, we had about, um, the bandaid rippers or the cold Turkey people I call them <laughs> versus mm -hmm. the hot Turkey people, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is, I'm more like that. And, how when people get into this, how many so many people just jump in, they get rid of all the stuff in their house and they just live on meat and water and they just go all in. I could never, I could never, I, you know, just slowly, but surely methodically, you know, made my way there, but just talk a little bit about your mentality and how you started your ketogenic living and about some of the benders that you've had lately, because uh, we need to talk about that thing, brother. We need to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to like, I mean, every, of course, everybody's different. So, yeah. I mean, but I would say that I've had way more people tell me that they're more like me in that situation than they are you. Like, yeah. I haven't had many people at all tell me that they have to slowly, slowly, slowly 
get their self into ketosis and slowly get into carnivore if they want to do that or whatever. I, I haven't had many people tell me that at all. Yeah, Most people tell me that they can't moderate carbs, like that they can't moderate sugar. And mm -hmm. so they just have to go all or nothing. And um, I mean, it, but there are people that can, because clearly you are, are are one of those examples. Just like there's, I have a coworker that's quitting smoking cigarettes right now, and she every week she's been smoking one less cigarette a week. Yeah. I mean a day. Yeah. And yeah. she's been doing that every week, and now she's down to like six cigarettes a day where she was smoking over a pack well, a day. That's how I have and, to do it. If I was a smoker, that year I I understand completely. Go ahead. And me, I can't do that at all. If I have only six cigarettes for the wet, for the day, I'm going to be constantly sitting there thinking about more, 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 more. So like I, it was easier for me to just cut it out completely and fight those cravings for a few weeks. And then they slowly start getting better. Yeah. Uh, then, to, um, then to, you know, try to do one less, one less, or have just a little bit. Cause I can't just sit there and, look at a cake and yeah. be like, okay, I'm going to have just a little bitty piece of cake Yeah, because like me, it's like, it ain't cake. It's cocaine. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> like if I have a little bite of the cake, like I'm fixing to tear it up. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and, and it has negative effects on me. So it, it's better for me to just abstain yeah. Now I have thought about, because when you talked about the benders or whatever, I have been struggling recently and it, it can come off like an excuse, but I think oh. that like the, the holiday season, I feel like there's been so much stuff thrown in my face. Like every day at work, there's candy everywhere. Yeah, there's, wow. They had like today they had cupcakes at work yesterday or the day before they had like cakes and yeah the day before or they also had like cinnamon rolls and all this stuff every day and Halloween yeah. candy. And it just seems like all everybody in the office wants to do is just eat junk food. <laughs> and, and so like even more, I mean, they, I know they do that anyway, but right now it's even more than normal. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it's an abnormal amount. Yeah. And, and, and with me, that food still, I wish I was one of those peoples that could say 24 seven every day. If I walk in the grocery store, nothing ever looks good at all because right. oh. that would be awesome. Yeah, but sometimes when I pass by the Krispy Kreme donut section, yeah. sometimes they look good. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and and you know, in those moments, like there's always this battle going on in my mind: should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? Yeah. And then, yeah. but sometimes it gets so bad, and that pressure gets so bad that I'll just, I'll just snap and be like. Boom, I'm going to have it. And whenever I have it, and usually I'm going to just have it for today. And then a lot of times, there's been a couple times where it was just that day. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I want to get more towards where, like, right. if it happens, it is for a day. Right. Not right. a week. Yeah. Because I can, if I, if I ate like that for a day and then I didn't eat like that again for a month, it would be fine. Yeah. But whenever I do it and it's more than a day, it's like a whole weekend and then yeah. it turns into a whole week and everything. Yeah. It just throws a kink in everything. Like yeah. I gained like 35 pounds recently from. See, now that's the part uh, that, that, that I thought that was a joke. Now I saw that and I heard somebody else talking about, it and I thought that was a joke. I really did. No, it was a God's God. honest truth. I don't even that know was, how that's you, physically possible. Did you, what did you drink the ocean? I mean, what did you know? Water, my, my body. Okay, so whenever you're like, because carnivore is even less carbs than keto. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, like I mean, it's pretty much no carbs unless you're counting right. like the carbs from like some garlic powder or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, you have no carbs. Right. And whenever you add, but you have tons of fat. But right. whenever you add carbs back to the mix, the carbs will make your body retain fluid like Absolutely. crazy yes i agree okay. that happened and to me so, yeah yeah so whenever i went off i mean i was having Popeye. i was having a good time okay, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, it was like it was like i was hanging out with old friends at the bar <laughs> drinking 
<laughs> like uh, we was we was making toast with sweet tea and all kind of oh, stuff. Right, right, and, right. Uh, I mean, it, it. I'm not gonna lie. It was fun, but yeah. Yeah. I, when I stepped on the scale, it was up 35 pounds, and I was actually back over 400 pounds again. Wow. And and um, you know, well, the past. Hey man, week, that's like I've worked like on getting hump. that back off. I'm like, that's like a camel hump, man. If you can pick up 35 pounds of fluids, man. But of course, you're a big dude. I have that same problem. Whenever I, it, it, you know, I have not, knock on wood, I've not had more than like two days in a row, you know, of, of being off the program, um, you know, or off of my norms. But I know because I, I know because when I, on a normal day, like when I'm living my normal life, I go to the bathroom probably five or six times a day. When I'm off of my program, I go like twice a day, maybe three times a day. So I know, and I can feel it. I can feel myself just kind of getting a little heavier, kind of getting a little bloated or whatever a little bit. I don't have any other problem, aches or pains. I hear people talking about having, you know, joint pain and stuff like that. I want, part of me wonders, is that because of picking up water maybe that they have that, or is there physically something in their joint? But that, I'm digressing. The point is, yeah. I hear you loud and clear on picking up the fluids. But I just thought, man, 35 pounds, that is crazy. And that's over the span of time. Look, look, hey, look, I'm a Christian and I don't believe in lying. <laughs> it it happened. And over, how, I stepped what kind on of the scale. It, it blew my mind. I was expecting, I was expecting to step on the scale and be like, okay, I'm up like 15 pounds. Yeah. I was like, it's gonna be 15 pounds and I'm gonna work on when it said 35 pounds, I was like, dude, I got a lot of work to do. But what span of time are we talking here? It was only what a week, maybe a week and a half, okay. maybe a week and a half. Okay, okay. That's and not- it was just it was it it it, it blew my mind. I was expecting yeah. and and see, there's times that I've went off the rails for like a weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And stepped on the scale and gained like maybe six pounds or seven to eight pounds, and you know, and and throughout by the end of the next week, I've lost that. But right, right, yeah. I've never, but I've any other time that I went a full week, I never weighed myself because I was always like scared to see what the scale set. Just like when I was younger, when I was really obese, I didn't want to look at the scale. I didn't yeah. want to get on a scale and weigh, but I knew when I was at the doctor, I had to. But other than that, I didn't like to weigh because I didn't want to see the number. Yeah. And so like, I would be like, no, I'm not even going to step on the scale. But this time I was like, no, for accountability reasons, I'm going to step on the scale yeah. and see what it says and work from there. And whenever it said that, cause I had went down to 382 pounds yeah, yeah. from right at 500 pounds. And then, um, uh, after getting down to 382, that put me back up to 417. And then I done a challenge for five days. And during the challenge, I lost 22 of the 35 pounds. So that puts me back down to 395. Yeah, yeah. Now, th- that's di- the other, well, that's a difference between me and you, too. I only weigh myself once a month. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, to everybody does it different. Some people do it every day. <clears throat> and I wouldn't even do that, except I get death threats from my subscribers if I don't <laughs> tell them how much I weigh. You know, I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, people want to know everything. And so I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to weigh myself once a month. That's it. Cause like I said, mm-hmm. if it was me, I wouldn't even weigh myself at all. Well, that's not true. I would probably weigh myself when I like maybe started feeling a difference in my clothes or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh man, I can't wear the shirt anymore. It's too big. Then I would probably weigh myself on something like that, but just weekly or daily or no, no, it would have to be some significant thing like i can't wear this anymore Mm -hmm. then i'm gonna be like well i wonder how much i weigh now but the thing that i find the most interesting and fascinating to me is how your mind works when you're off the program versus how my mind works when i'm off the program because but that again is a testament to you know like when i was trying my best to do the right things and eat the right way Again, my normals and my routines and my habits are like a gravitational pull. They're pulling me back. And it's just, it takes so much to overcome that for me. 
And I knew that once I got on the right track, once I got to ketosis, once, you know, fat and proteins and that became my normal, it would work the opposite way. And when Mm -hmm. I got off track, I'd be pulled back to normal. And that's exactly how my mind works. So I think it's so interesting how when you're eating things that are outside of your normal, you're thinking about more things outside of your normal versus me. I'm not because I don't think any differently than you when I walk past the Krispy Kreme donut or when the the family brings stuff out or they're baking cookies or whatever the case may be. I hear you loud and clear and I'm with you. I have some. I don't think about it. I don't guilt myself over it. It's not my normal, you know, I whatever. But your mind keeps taking you down the road, whereas my mind is taking me back to my normal life. That's the part that I just find very interesting. Yeah. And and also there's, I've noticed too, that like, there's like, I deal with like this fear, I guess you could say fear inside. That's like, maybe this is the time that you get so far off the rails that you can't get back on mm-hmm. because like every other diet that I've ever done, like I've always gave up. Yeah. I've always quit. And there's always that fear in the back of my mind that I'm not going to get back on track. So like it literally affects me mentally. Yeah. When I get off track, like I feel like I'm failing and like just yeah. things are yeah. on as plan and I'm letting myself down. I'm letting my viewers down. I'm letting my mm-hmm. wife and everybody down because I want to do I want to get healthy. Okay. Sure. Like I want to, I know that even at the weight I'm at, I mean, I'm a lot healthier than I was, yeah. but I'm yeah. not, yeah. I'm not truly healthy right now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and I want to get more closer to that. But every time that I go off the rails for a week, it's just prolonging it. It's yeah. prolonging it and making it take longer. And honestly, I, I don't feel like I have forever. Like I know I still mm. have youth and I'm still young, yeah. but like, I mean, at 30, I still have some time on my hands, but how many, <laughs> yes, how sir. many, how many, how many 85 year olds do you know that weigh over 500 pounds? Yeah, none. But, but, but here's the thing I would say to you on that. And again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just sharing my view and how I went about this, uh, just to give you a different perspective. A couple of things with me. It was way, 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 way more important to me to do something I could sustain for the rest of my life than anything else. I don't, didn't care. I mean, I care about all of these things, but in terms of prioritizing, I didn't Mm -hmm. care about losing weight. I didn't care about being healthy. I, the most important thing to me was I need something that I can do until I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Because my biggest fear in all of this is losing weight and gaining it all back. Mm-hmm. I would rather, I, I did an interview with Todd Bachness. He lost 300 pounds twice. I can't imagine that. I don't know if I can live through that. I would rather lose 50 pounds and keep it off the rest of my life than to lose 300 pounds and gain 250 back. I mean, either way, I've lost 50 pounds, but one is torture, you mm-hmm. know, and one is not. And the other mm-hmm. thing is I'm perfectly happy to lose, to, to lose this weight the same way I gained it. And I'm, again, this all comes back to something you said before. You don't know a lot of people think that way. I don't know how many people I've had but like, that are that like, no way. I need to lose this weight tomorrow. <laughs> i can't you know like what you're, you're 100 you're, i'm like okay don't be serious i mean i'm 54 years old it's not going to take me 54 years to lose a, but i don't care if it takes me five I yeah i don't care if it takes me i don't care if it takes me another three more yeah. years or something like yeah. that but yeah. like i mean if 10 years from now i'm still on here talking about carnivore and all that <laughs> stuff and i still weigh 350 pounds like i i, I hadn't done something right well, here's another thing I wanted to say quickly about just the mentality and the way that I approach it. I don't, I'm not, you, you said something very important. I think it's important for people to hear and understand all the other diets, you know, I got off of them. They didn't work, whatever. I, I'm, I'm sure I can speak for you when I say this ain't no diet. 
Oh yeah, it's a way of life. We have changed our lives. Um, because I understand that. And that in the essence is I think why people yo yo because they put themselves in something that they can't sustain and they end up, you know, getting off of it and going back to their old ways, as opposed to something like what we're doing that we know we can sustain. We know we can do with the knowledge that you have and the lifestyle that you're, you embraced, you will never ever go back to your old life. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, yeah, you, can't un, you can't unknow it. Once you know it, you yes. can't unknow it. Yes. And ketogenic living in my estimation and the way I approach it is not about eliminating your carbohydrates. You can't outrun a donut. They're everywhere. They're in gas stations. They're in grocery stores. They have their own special shops. <laughs> you know, they're in drug stores. I mean, you, you can't outrun that donut. Okay. But you can minimize and manage your carbohydrate intake. I think eliminating it is a pipe dream. I think minimizing and managing is achievable. You know, what do you think about that? I would say not to the, I wouldn't go to the extreme of saying, Hey, that you'll get to a point where you just never have it again for the rest of your life. But right. I think you can get it out of your life more than what people think they can. Yeah. Because I mean, there's people that, that there's people like Dr. Chafee that have done that and, and they have great success. I mean, like, like Carrie does now. I mean, I, I'm not able, I haven't been able to get to that point, but I have seen people that have had success by, by, by doing that. So I'm not taken away from them, but absolutely I mean, man. everybody, but everybody's not a superhero from the planet carnivore. Okay, let's yeah. let's be real. And, and listen, shout out to Chafee. Chafee's probably sitting right now eating a pizza right now in Australia, and you know it's, it's you know, he'll be <laughs> yeah, and he'll be on his stream, uh, you know, telling people to leave those leave them carrots alone. But no, I'm teasing. Mm -hmm. Doc Chafee's my guy, but yeah. but everybody can't. Those people are the extreme, and I and Chafee and I have talked about this. It's, I'm I I mess with him and need him. He's a good dude. I I, I enjoy him a lot everybody these people don't realize how rare they are they mm -hmm. they are the 10 percent. there's always a friends group that's like the best of the best or whatever and god bless him i'm not it's not a criticism but for a guy like me that ain't realistic and if i mm -hmm. judge myself by his root or measure myself with his yardstick i'll always come up short yeah i have to to be my best. Sometimes your best isn't as good as somebody else's best. I mean, it's just, that's just the way life is. So I think for the average person, and that's how I look at myself, you know, it's a more about management and minimizing than elimination. I always talk about progress over perfection. You cannot be mm -hmm. perfect. You will never be perfect, mm -hmm. but you can always make progress. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. It's yeah. very, it's very hard to, it's very hard to turn away from that stuff whenever it's in all the grocery stores. Sure. And in the, but I mean, if you look at tribes though, like the Inuit and stuff like that, they don't have that stuff around them. Right. What it is, they don't have those temptations. Right. That's that, what that's it boils right. down to: is temptations. That's and like, right. but I kind of see both sides a little. I see what you're saying, but I also see what Doctor Chafee and them are saying because I mean. Right. They're, I mean, in their mind, they look at it more like a drug or alcohol yeah. or something yeah. like that. Like they, they say that it's not good for you. It's terrible for you. Yeah. We want you to stay away from it. Yeah. But I have also heard Dr. Chafee say that there's been a few times where he drank some alcohol and he knows that alcohol was not good for yeah. him, but there yeah. have been some times that he has drank alcohol, but he knows like that. Okay. If you look back to the animals, when you look at animals, they are way healthier. I mean, some of them are malnourished and they haven't had enough food to eat and stuff like that. But in theory, if you look at animals around the world, except for our house pets that we overfeed every day, they're, they're in way better shape than what a sure. lot of people are. Sure. And because they don't have access to all the food and all the stuff that That's we've right. made and all the stuff that's created, but 
some of the problems that we have is because we've created them. We've manufactured Absolutely. these problems. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. There should have like there should have never been a thing created called a honey bun, but now the cat's out the bag. <laughs> we've already made the honey buns and people know about them. <laughs> so now people cannot get them out of their brain. Yeah. You yeah. See what I'm saying? But like yeah. at the end of the day, Dr. Chafee's trying to tell people that stuff is terrible for you. Absolutely. But I, it's I, I, hard. It's hard to fight those those cravings and stuff. But for me, but I, I, again, I hear you and I don't disagree with you and I don't disagree with him. I just try to be more practical. I think it's yeah. an extreme position. And I think, again, when you look at him, everything about him is 1%. I mean, he's, how many brain surgeons chisel out of stone are there on the planet? You know what I mean? It's like, and people like him don't understand how exceptional they are. Mm -hmm. I guess that's maybe a backhanded compliment, whatever. But the people, he's just himself. He doesn't think, man, I'm pretty extraordinary. Not everybody can do what I do. Not everybody can be who I am. Matter of fact, almost nobody can be who I am. <laughs> it's like, see, he doesn't see himself that way. Now, you know, whereas, a, you know, a guy like me sees him that way. It's like, dude, you have no idea how rare, you know, you are and, and how unique, you know, uh, uh, and how talented or whatever you are in that way. 99.8% of people on the planet can never achieve that. So give us give us mere mortals a break. It, you know, I think if pe more people knew and understood what we know and understand, then they wouldn't want the honey bun. They wouldn't want the oatmeal and the and the, you know, and the Cheerios and the, all that stuff because they they just don't know what we know. You know, so well, that's, that's the reason that we have our channels is yeah. we're trying to impact it, even if it's a small amount of people we're trying to impact every person that we can yes, yes. Help every individual to learn, because I mean, we, we don't want, I, I know for me, I don't want people to go through what I've been through and I don't oh. want people to, I don't want people to deal with that and that pain and all the different things and diabetes yeah. and all that stuff. I don't want that for, for anybody. Yeah. So. Oh, no, no, I, I totally agree with you. And you know, man, let you know, for, don't, don't beat yourself up about your, you know, when you get out of your norm or whatever, you know, don't beat yourself. I say all the time, don't beat yourself up, pick yourself up, you know, get back on the program. You have the knowledge and you got to know and trust and believe that you can never go back to your old life. You just can't yeah. do it. Even when I do, even when I eat stuff, I shouldn't eat. It ain't like it used to be. I go home. I'll yeah. still listen. I'll smash six white castles. Don't even think about it. But guess what? I don't have that large chocolate shake anymore. Yeah. Because I know more yeah. now than I knew then. The six, the, the White Castles, that's a misdemeanor. You know, that's, yeah. you know, 40, 50 carbs, whatever. I can, I can get, you know, I can handle that. But that shake by itself is 220. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't beat, I can beat 50 carbs. I can't beat 220. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I definitely, oh. I definitely believe in giving yourself grace. Yeah. Like, you know, giving yourself grace along the way and along the journey, but also where some people, some people that have addiction, yeah, like they will in the name of giving their self grace, sure. they'll let it go sure. too far. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it becomes this point where like, okay, like it's kind of like if you know something is good that you should do, yeah. but you don't and you say i'm not doing it because i'm being weak right now i'm not doing it because i'm being weak right now well eventually even there's biblical scriptures like for him that knows to do good and doeth it not yeah. to him it's yeah. sin there's different scriptures in the bible that i mean like if you know like eventually at some point you know i know there's a lot of grace but you have to man up and say or woman up and be like okay i have to i have to do something different and yeah. so uh Otherwise, you're just trampling over all that grace and just keep making the same old, same old. It's kind of like if you're trying to quit drinking alcohol, but every other day you're telling you, I, man, I had a couple drinks today. I had a couple yeah. drinks today. I had a couple drinks today. Well, like, have you really quit drinking alcohol if you're still drinking every other day? So, well, again, I mean, and, and that's, but that goes into the philosophy. I never said I was going to quit eating carbs. I never said I was going to quit. As a matter of fact, even if you look at my earliest videos, you know, my entire goal was to create a life that I could sustain forever. 
until I'm dead. And so there's no way I, you know, I'm going to eat Thanksgiving dinner with my family. That's oh, I-, I will too, but I don't think that like, I don't, I will do that as well, but I don't think that honey buns are part of the <laughs> like proper human diet to have on every other Tuesday. No, no. I, 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 yeah. Tuesday and if, if you, if you embrace ketogenic living, you're not doing that. I mean, again, if you're, uh, this is a, again, a life change, a lifestyle change my carb number is, hovers around 12. I'm between 10 and 15. You need to day. ask some of your subscribers mm-hmm. how often they slip up. And and what a slip up is to them because I yeah. feel like some of them their definition of slip up may be different than yours because sure. the way you explain to me the way you think I feel like is um awesome I wish I thought that way yeah but I feel like less people see it the way you do yeah I feel like more people are like me I don't that well, there's it, no, there's no doubt about it the carnivore see I'm not see here well, <laughs> I'm not talking carnivore I'm just yeah. talking in general. Like the well, slipping think, up and all that stuff. I feel like more people are, are like, they go way off the rails. They don't just, I feel like more people, they don't just have like, you know, to them a cheat is to have like, I don't know, some extra berries or some this and that, whatever it is. I feel like a lot of people, when they go off the rails, they really, really go off yeah. the rails. Yeah. Uh, you could definitely be true about, you could, you could be, you could be, I, I could be. Um, because again, I run in the in the carnivore circle, but I'm not. I don't. Again, I I talk about this all the time. I don't know what the rules are. Um, I, I eat about a hundred carbs a week. Is that? I mean, that's not very much. Technically, technic, I think technically that would be keto. I don't I think, think so because that's ten or twelve a day. It would be ketovore at worst. Yeah, yeah, that would be ketovore probably. And 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 eighty and eighty percent of my carbs come from sauces and condiments, like you know tomato sauce, salsa, guacamole, sour cream, you know things like that. I don't. I'm not eating. So you're not eating. So you're not eating Brussels sprouts. No. And and then yeah yeah and that I would say you're I would say that's ketovore then. I mean, think if, if you're if, not eating the veggies, but you're just having some yeah. condiments, I might things, even and like really when I have ground beef, I might put I put onions and peppers in there, chop up onions mm. and peppers in it. But I only eat ground beef. I mean, I have a rotation, um, you know. But it's like I it, that's not a lot of carbs. I mean, if you think about you know ten or twelve carbs a day, two meals, that ain't very much. Your plate ain't much different than mine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in that space, I would. Uh, that's probably ketovore, I would say. And somebody, but and then, but somebody else said, I heard somebody was on our show and said that a doctor told them, or I, or they read in a book somewhere, if you get more than seventy percent of your diet in protein and fat, that you're a carnivore. More than seven. No, I, I don't think so. I don't, and, and that's what I'm saying. Listen, Paul Saladino comes on and calls himself a car, carnivore and talks about eating honey and berries all day. He eats more carbs than I do. I mean, yeah, that to me, well, that's not to me, that's not yeah. carnivore either. When you're right. adding in things like right. that, I mean, right. like if you want to get super nitpicky, carnivore is literally just like meat and eggs and animal right. products only, right? Like only, right? It wouldn't. Eat, it, Technically, it wouldn't even include things like seasonings that have right, um, right. like garlic powder and things like that. But me, I allow those things. Yeah. Like I, I allow like some garlic powder, some black pepper, yeah. things like that. I, I know that they they come from a plant. So yeah. technically, they're not carnivore. Yeah. But I do have that stuff. And that yeah. helps me to stay on track by having those things. Yeah, I don't even like I said. You, you, we talked. I don't know if you and I have talked about it. I, I hate the labels, all that. I use my carb number, and you and mm-hmm. I, okay, we may have a little different. I like guacamole, like I don't want that, or I like some tomatoes, or I like some little things. But what bonds us is we eat a lot of protein and fat. <laughs> you know, that's what mm-hmm. dominates our lives. And for me, like I said, I have, I guess you call planned. Things, you know, when I go on vacation, I don't, I, I, I just live my life. I don't cheat. People say, oh, did you, I don't cheat. I live my life. I have my normal routine, how I eat literally 90% of the time. And then I have 10% of the time when I go off my routine. 
I don't think about it. I don't dwell about it. I don't, I just live my life. You know, I hate to see people beating themselves up for being what they, being, being humans. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're not, you're not a failure. Are you kidding me? You could never be a failure, man. You're, look at what you've done. Look at what you accomplished. Look at how different your life is. Man, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah. don't, don't ever think that, man. And you get knocked, you get back on, to, you know, I eat steak and eggs tomorrow. Today, Popeye's chicken. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, really, man. I think, uh, you know, and that's part of the reason why I don't use that language, cheating, and uh, it's it's too it's got a negative connotation to it. You know, cheating just it, it, you say off plan meal. No, I just say I'm living my life. Yeah, I'm living my life, man. You know, but I have no intention of being out of my normal. But hey. Mm-hmm. Somebody says, come on over. We're watching football. Get over there. There's a pizza over there. <laughs> you know, I might have mm-hmm. some, you know, you have the right, you have yeah. the personality yeah. that that works good for. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. like, that's what I want. That's what I, that like, I want people that see this to hear is like, yeah. if they think like you do, then go that route. Yeah. But if they, if they don't, if their mind doesn't work like that, right. Then yeah. That won't work for them. The, right. Everybody has to go based off of how their personality is, yeah. and how they are with the things, if they're going to go off the rails or yeah. if they're going to have that little off plan thing. Cause like, I mean, like my buddy, Sean, intentional carnivore, he'll have like a cheat meal once a month that he plans and he doesn't call it a cheat meal. He calls right. it an off plan meal. Right. He just, right. Yeah. Well, that's know. what he does. Yes. And, but me, I'm not the type of person that like, I mean, I won't, yeah too but like i'll think about it and think about it and think about it and then the next day when i wake up the next day i'm like dude yeah let's do that again yeah (laughs) (laughs) listen i hear you loud and clear and and you know the psychology of this thing is something that's not talked about as maybe as much as it should be like for instance I, i i'm with you in the sense that I can't do a little bit of this every day. And I, no, no, I can't. I, that wouldn't work either. If I had snicker bars out there all the time and all that, or maybe if I live with a bunch of people that were doing stuff, it would be a lot harder um, for me to do that. But I look forward to, to certain times like Thanksgiving Day or when I go on vacation or what. I kind of look forward to those times a little bit because I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have some potatoes. I'm going to have some this and I'm that. But then, like I said, I go back to my norm very easily. I don't, I don't have any problem going back to my normal. So, yeah, that's a very interesting how the mind works. Um, I guess you'd call it addictive personality or something. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't have that. I have other problems, but that ain't one. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're blessed to to not have that. I mean, the fact that you don't says that you're going to be very successful with this because that's one thing that causes a lot of people to give up because of that, that going back and forth and the, just the way that it is. And that, that struggle that a lot of people have to get back on. It seems like you don't have that struggle to but pick back ask, up. But the let me ask day. you that question. Is it the going back and forth or is it the way they beat themselves up about going back and forth about it? Well, I mean the, 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 some people have the, ser- I mean, it can be both. Yeah. It can be both, but some people just have that. I mean, it's kind of like if you were, let's say you did fentanyl or something crazy yeah. like that. Like it's not because if you're so, or so, if you're a meth head, yeah. if you're a meth head, it's might not be killing you because you're, because you're beating yourself up. You no, know, it's killing you and, and destroying you just because of what it is. And because, because you're doing it, you know? And yeah. so, I mean, I, don't I, get you, I get where you're trying to go, but I hate comparing it to like, you know, drugs and literally that's like, a, you know, a broccoli I mean, is not the same. Thing. It's fake food though. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm with you. I, 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 I mean, I it, it, it's from. fake food that was specifically designed to make you crave it, like to make you crave it. And it, I just feel like a lot of the stuff, I mean, I accept it whenever I eat it. I'm not saying I don't do it. Like I accept what I'm eating and I just take it in. But I do feel like it was 
it's terrible. But and that, I feel but, like it was designed just to lure me in. But the, but you, but it's funny because if, when you said it, I just you went you were like, but I feel like I let myself down and let people down and let my subscribers down. And I feel like a failure. And I mean, you like it was. I I, I found that very interesting. You w- went on for a, a few statements about how not just eating the, but how it affected you mentally after you ate it versus you saying, Hey, listen, I'm a human being. I eat fat and protein, literally 340 out of 365 days a year. This Popeye's chicken today ain't going to, you know, derail my other 340 days of the year. Now, if you approached it that way, do you think it would be, if it was one day, I would approach it that way. I got you. If it was if it was one day, I would be like, "Yeah, hey, this one day's nothing." Gotcha. gotcha. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. But the problem is, is like that one day when it turns into a week, yeah. then you then then you're the reason that I feel the down on myself yeah. and and everything is not just mentally; it's because I know that it's destroying my health. Yeah. Like it's not just a feeling. I know what it's doing. I mean, I gained 30 something pounds. Yeah. And so, Uh, and, and, and there's nothing good about that. Yeah. Like all that water and all the inflammation and all that stuff, there's nothing good about it. And so I should feel bad about it or I should be like, Hey, I've got to do something different because if I go off the rails for that long, it's a serious problem to my health. Yeah. Oh, yes. And listen, I, I, I'm definitely with you on that. And listen, I don't claim to have the answer. Look, look at me. Do I look like I got all the answers? I mean, I, you know, I said all the time. I look like a before and a before I don't either. picture. But I just share my life with people and my thoughts with people. And I can't be the only person in this life. that. And I know it affects people because I've had so many people message me and comment and email me and say, man, You know, I love the way you go about this, you know, progress over perfection. I'll never be perfect, but I can always make progress. Like, I'm going to put that on my refrigerator and, you know, and yeah, I'm not going to beat myself up. You know, hey, I had had a cookie in three months. I had a cookie and I just felt horrible about it. And I'm like, you know, don't compare yourself to where you want to be. Compare yourself to where you came from, man. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. when I think about what my old life was, dude, I was eating on some days, I would eat 700 to 1,000 carbs in a day. I could drink 500 carbs a day. So, you know, when I, I laugh at when, when I have a, a hamburger or something, and I don't, I mean, it's, are you kidding me? I mean, it's crazy when I think about just the carbs I used to drink, let alone eat. Um, well, I've, I've been listening to... Um a book by Jordan Peterson recently and uh, about the 12 rules of life or whatever. Yeah. And he, he, he said something in that book that I, it really stuck out to me. And he said, uh, I don't remember exact way he worded it, but he was basically saying, Hey, don't compare yourself to other people, even though oh, it's human nature right. to want to compare yourself to that's other people, right. compare, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's right. Yes. Right. I love because, because who you are yesterday, that's who you need to be better than. You right. need to keep trying to be a little bit better version of you, not this person does this, this person's yes. amazing at that, and trying to reach their goals. Because you're never going to be happy. You're, I'm never going to be Michael Jordan. That's right. Uh, you know, and I'm never going to be certain people, but I can be a better me if I just keep yeah. trying every day to just be a little bit better version of myself. I totally, totally agree with that because we well, we talked about that kind of in a little bit when we were talking about Chafee and how exceptional he is. You know, if you look at him and you compare yourself to him, you'll, you'll be, you'll have a depressed life because again, he's in rarefied air. Everything about him is just, is just exceptional you know, and unique and, and extraordinary. So it's like, man, if I rush up and fight, that's my standard. Whew, I got a lot of lot of uh, dark days ahead of me because <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get there, you know. But yeah, I'm part of me, mm-hmm. part part of me though thinks that years from now we can get closer to that. Sure, like sure, yeah. I, I, like I feel like I feel like if you like because you like the slow progress and the slow change and all that stuff, so you're getting a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And like, if you fast forward 10 years from now, 
and you've stayed on the course that you're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it might, you might surprise yourself at where you're at in 10 years. Like, I mean, yeah. there's people that tell there, I have people that tell me that whenever they started this, like they could still have tons of different things and tons of seasonings and tons yeah. of things like that. And they tell me that now they've done it for so long that whenever they have black pepper, it causes a reaction or yeah. whenever they have anything different, it causes a reaction. And it's almost like that they've ate so clean that anything affects them. I can go one step better than that. Uh, first of all, it's not that I like the slow, steady way. I just am 99% sure it's the only way I can do it and be successful. And wish, that's exactly what you need to do. I wish there was a fast forward button for me. I really wished I could hit the fast forward button. But no, understanding myself and knowing myself, I don't believe you know that that I could be successful doing it any other way. That's why I do it this way. Um, but but the, the other thing that you were saying was that you ten years from ten years how, ten weeks. I'm surprising myself all the time <laughs> about what mm -hmm. I could do. I mean, when I first started, you know, doing this, I ate lettuce and tomato every day of my life. I other I can't remember. I haven't bought lettuce or tomato in months i had the last time i had lettuce or tomato was on a hamburger you know um there's other things that i used to use all the time i don't that i don't use anymore so i you're right uh and i'm not closing the door to anything that well, well look if you just based off of our conversation yeah. if you just stay on the course that you're on in about 20 years and no in about 10 years you're going to be on line diet <laughs> and then in about two or three years after that, you're going to just eat bowls full of air. Hey, and that's listen, all. I'm already on. Listen, I've been lying about my diet my whole life. I, you know, I, listen, I, <laughs> listen, I don't close the door on anything. You're talking to a guy whose carb number used to be 500. Mm -hmm. Who's now. I didn't even count my carbs in a day. Yeah. But I, I know, about, I know well, they were staggering. I had to think about it. I went back. And listen, it's crazy. I know I know the I am. I went back. I've been to about every fast food website. Um, I've looked up the nutritional information everywhere, like my normal life. What's a how many carbs are in a large pepperoni pizza? How many carbs are in a Big Mac? How, I, because I wanted to construct my old life, like in a day. What was I doing? What was I drinking? I and I calculated all that stuff just to see where I used to be. Cause again, I didn't know anything about all that stuff. And I was around 500 carbs a day. It's crazy when you look at where I used to be and where I'm at. So if you think I'm going to get mad at myself because I had a donut coming where I came from, no shot. There's just no way. I can't muster up the energy to be angry about that when I look how far I've come. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I could never go back. Never. I just know too much now. I have too much knowledge. I understand how my body works. I understand ketosis and fat burning and carbs and proteins and fats and what our body needs and how we get our nourishment. Man, I could never go back. I've, I've never asked you or heard you talk about it on the, one of the live streams. Do you, um, have anybody that lives in the home with you that eats a certain way different? No, I live by myself. I used, I lived with a vegetarian for six years, but that does help. But I do have my family that comes in and when they're here, I eat 75% my, my diet. And I veer off a little bit with them. Like when my family was here for a few days, I had my steak and eggs and or, or bacon, eggs and coffee for breakfast. They made some type of pasta thing for dinner. I had a little bit of that with some leg of lamb that I had and a little bit of vegetables. And then my nieces were baking cookies. I had a ribeye steak and a couple of cookies. I have kind of a 90-10 philosophy. It's the two crazy ketos talk about that. It's funny because I didn't even know of them when I came up with the philosophy. But, you know, it's 365 days in a year. I got 329 days that I'm going to be on track and the other 30 days, whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I don't think about it. And it's not like I count the days. It's not like I got a calendar. I'm at the end of the year. Oh, I got 17 more days. Ooh, what can I eat? No, it's, it's nothing like that. Again, I've changed my life. 
Um, but when those life things happen, I don't get down about it. I don't think about it. I don't, I just, you know, get back on track, which again, for me is easy to do. It's easier for me to go back to what I know and what I'm used to. Um, it's just that that's not something that's hard for me to do. And I understand I may be different, but I want to just, I want to share it with people, you know, um, as a way, just a different way. I don't, again, I, I'm not claiming to have the answers and you have to judge me. Like you said, 10 years from now, if I'm still on here at 500 pounds saying, Hey, you know, well, then you can be like, yeah, buddy, uh, guess what? I ain't where it's at, but I've lost 50 pounds. I'm living my best life. Could I have lost a hundred? Maybe. Or like I said, maybe I wouldn't have stayed on it at all if I'd have done it a different way. I don't know. And I'm scared to death to find out. Absolutely. So anyway, brother, man, listen, uh, tell the people that don't know, most people know, but this, we'll wrap up. Tell the people where they can find you on social media and kind of what they can expect when they come over to your channel and then and check you out. And then we'll wrap this thing up. Well, absolutely. First, it was a pleasure for to be on here. Thank you for having me on. You you are definitely hilarious, and I love chatting with you and having a good time. It's been very uh, relaxing and just having fun tonight. But uh, anyway, uh, if y'all watch YouTube, you can find me at carnivore underscore Kip on YouTube or just carnivore Kip on YouTube. But I have Instagram if you like Instagram. It's carnivore underscore Kip. And then as of today, I finally made a Facebook profile because I kept getting so many uh, messages to my personal Facebook account. And eventually it was getting to the point where it was getting too full. So I was like, I'm just going to have to create an account. Yeah, yeah. So you can find me there on Facebook. It's Carnivore Kip on Facebook as well. Yeah, I love that. You're in high demand for good reason, man. You're you're an all-around good dude. I appreciate the, the kind words. I appreciate your life and your inspiration. It certainly, like I said before, was one of the first channels I ever saw. And and uh, just, you know, I wish you, wish you nothing but the best and success to you and your family uh, as we both continue, you know, down, down this path. Uh, folks. This is Keto Conversations this is what we do, man. We bring you folks that that are just everyday people, man. We want you to see their lives. We want you to get to know them better so that you'll, you know, be inspired and motivated. You know, it, it, we make mistakes. We stumble and fall. We get back up. You know, we have different philosophies, different ideas, different ways, you know, that we do it. But the most important thing is we are doing it. And I want you to do it. Keep moving, grooving, steadily improving, striving and thriving every day, trying to be a little bit better and we're going to keep bringing these people to you so uh stay tuned to my channel homesick buckeye and we're going to have more keto conversations uh, but for now we're going to say goodbye and god bless we wish you all the best